Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Yesterday you saw amazing pictures from surveillance and Local 4 cameras of that Amber Alert chase. Today we're putting you on board a police cruiser. New dash cam video. And a Corktown bar has just been condemned and the owner says the construction crew working next door caused the damage. But we're going to begin here at five with the weather Four live radar is lit up this afternoon with storms starting to move through. Yeah, and uh, we've got proof too. there's lightning from our Windsor Sky Camp wow. just a few minutes ago. Just look at those clouds a little dark the sky there. Exactly. Well, the fact is, though, we really need some rain after yeah. a very, very dry stretch that we've had. Absolutely. Let's start things off here at five with Ben. Ben. Yeah, and it may be coming down a little too fast in some spots. We've got a flood advisory out now from much of Wayne County, including the city of Detroit. And this is in effect until 745. The thunderstorms, as we told you right before the show, have now reached the east side. And you can see there's some definitely embedded downpours within these cells. We'll start out here from the gross points down through Jefferson. And you can see here Warren Mack Avenue uh, getting soaked right now. The uh, lightning strikes that we have picked up have been on the other side of 94. These storms not likely to be severe. But it's the rainfall that could cause problems, especially as everybody hits the roads and heads home. A lot of those highway underpasses are prime candidates for flooding. When we see the rainfall coming down like this on the other side of 75 Grand Boulevard, Warren Avenue, getting those downpours right now. A lot of the city center, at least downtown, is missing the rain right now, but it is going to be here very quickly. Not a lot more to go uh, beyond that that's showing up on four live radar, but there are more storms back to the northwest, so some of these spots may still be filling in before the sun goes down down. That's when I think most of these storms will actually come to an end. Temperatures staying in the 80s with that humidity around and we'll at least see at least scattered thunderstorms through the early part of the evening. More on the multiple chances of storms to come in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben, now to our other top story today. A Dearborn jewelry store robbed overnight and they seem to know exactly what they were looking for. Hey, take a look here at the security camera video. You can see the robbers use a pickup truck to smash through the front window and then they go on a tear through the store. Our Sean Lay spoke to the store's owner and shows us how this is just part of a tragic chain of events for him. The owner here tells me in 21 years, nothing like this has happened. I'll show you the video. It's a stolen truck out of Southgate, stolen last night, that backs right into his business. One guy gets out with a knapsack and hammer and goes right for these cases. I always felt my location is my safety. They're cleaning up the shattered glass and mangled metal door in what was the front entrance of NJ Diamonds on Schaefer and Ford in Dearborn. Its owner of 21 years, Zohair Abdelhaq, trying to keep it all in perspective. I feel that I am healthy, my family is healthy, and nobody got hurt. But watch what a team of thieves did here at 443 this morning. A man with a bag and hammer gets out of this pickup. The driver backing right into the front of the store, destroying the entrance. The man inside starts smashing and grabbing anything in sight. Next, like something out of a heist movie, a man on a motorcycle pulls up. The thief in the store carries out the jewels, gets on the bike, but they know they still have plenty of time. So the driver tells him, to go back in. And the guy on the motorcycle, he asked him to go once more again. So he comes again and he take more jewelry. Just look at the inside of his shop shelves and cases cleaned out of necklaces, rings, diamonds, watches, and coins, all imported from the Middle East. Abdel Haq, while happy no one got hurt, he hopes the thieves do get hurt. I hope they use it for drugs, for prostitution, and I hope that they will overdose too. Some strong language there, strong feelings there for Mr. Abdel Haq. You can forgive him. He's so stressed out waking up today to this break in, then coming right down here downtown early this morning for the ending of a trial. His father was run over and killed by a driver in Dearborn back in December. That trial wrapped up just a little bit ago. The driver was found guilty. Now Mr. Abdel Haq back at his shop he's had for 21 years, still assessing all the damage, guys. Yeah, just a horrible chain of events there for him, Sean. Uh, any other similar incidents to this one? You know, we talked to Dearborn police a lot about this today, and they said no, nothing with the stolen truck and a motorcycle wait, waiting, targeting a jewelry shop. They're checking with other municipalities, but right now, this is the only one. Mm. Okay, Sean, thanks. Right now, new dash cam video of yesterday's wild Amber Alert chase. He changed lanes in the middle. 
about 61 right now. The video shows the moment the pursuit began. It started all the way down in Monroe County. Yeah, Jason Colthorpe was the first reporter on the scene after that chase came to an end on Detroit's west side. He got his hands on the new video today. Jason, it shows just how dangerous this was and that two year old inside the car, too. I know that's what you have to keep reminding yourself, Kim. There's a two year old in the back of that truck as it's weaving across the road, fighting off an MSP trooper at one point. But the dash cam comes from a Monroe City police officer. It shows those first few moments uh, when that pack up, uh, the, the passenger in the pickup looks back to see the chase ensuing. And for a few moments, you can tell the driver isn't sure what he's going to do. On patrol just before 9 a.m. Tuesday morning, a Monroe City police officer spots Grady Barrett's pickup on 275 North. And this is the vehicle. This is the vehicle northbound at the Hurt Overpass. The officer moves into traffic, radios for backup, and then waits until he lights him up along with the siren. He's not pulling over, but he's not speeding off yet. But that would change quickly as an MSP trooper takes the lead. Watch as he tries to force the pickup over. But after some cat and mouse, the pickup is able to get ahead and then speeds start to soar all the way to triple digits. The chase ended up hitting I-94, I-96 and the Southfield before moving to surface streets. And then finally, almost an hour after it began, a trooper spins him out off Seven Mile onto Myers, and two-year-old Sandra Renee was rescued. Her mother had this to say about the chase that put her little girl in danger. Hopefully, preferably, he get exactly what he deserves and don't get out of jail. She took it, took something that started off so small too far, and he should be severely punished <laughs> for all of his actions. That mother, of course, wants the driver punished. Uh, the Wayne County prosecutor has the warrant for this case. It's reviewing it. Uh, that driver will not be arraigned today, we're told. We'll let you know as soon as we do know. Back to you. Uh, Jason, the, 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 other, the woman who was arrested yesterday also in the truck, what's the status there? She's actually been released, Devin, but it huh. does not mean she's not going to be rearrested. I talked to Detroit police today. They say she is a major part of this case, but at this point, they, they found that they could release her. She, they still have uh, plans to talk to her regarding this investigation as it moves forward, for sure. Devin. Okay, Jason. Kim? Developing right now, just a short time ago, Detroit building inspectors condemned a popular Corktown bar, and the owners say it was a construction crew working next door that caused major damage. It's happening right now at the UFO factory. Our Tim Pamplin is there. Well, major developments here at the UFO bar. The city of Detroit has slapped a stop work notice on the Elton project. This Corktown development scheduled to open next year. Well, they're going to have to wait now since construction here has damaged the UFO bar quite significantly. A crack appearing along the entire north wall of this building, a building that the owners say has been a thorn in the developer's side. They've wanted to purchase this property, but the owner said no, not ready to sell. Then today, this. We managed to get some pictures from inside the bar. You see liquor bottles all over the place. You can actually see outside from behind the bar. Now here's an artist's rendition of what this project's gonna look like, and there you see the UFO bar right in the middle of this development. I'm hearing the relationships here are anything but neighborly. Stop, I'm calling the cops. You cannot do this. You do not have permission. Stop, stop right now. That's a representative from the UFO bar. Hey guys, bring the attorney. They're filling in the hole. Demanding that this concrete cover up stop. So back at here, major developments in the last few minutes. You see there the city of Detroit building inspector slapping the condemned notice on the UFO bar. I suspect with that and the stop work notice, we'll have to wait for the courts to figure this one out. That's for scene in Corktown. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, Tim. Now today in Washington, two bills getting major attention, but for different reasons. President Trump with strong support of big changes to legal immigration with uh, support for a merit based system. President also slamming a different bill imposing sanctions on three countries, including Russia. Blaine Alexander joins us from Washington. Blaine. 
Well, Devin, President Trump said that this would be the biggest change to immigration policy in more than 50 years and already is drawing criticism from both parties. President Trump, an outspoken opponent of illegal immigration, today backing major changes to legal immigration, endorsing a bill designed to cut the number of people entering the U.S. This competitive application process will favor applicants who can speak English, financially support themselves and their families. The plan, introduced by GOP Senators Tom Cotton and David Perdue, would consider education, ability to speak English, and high-paying job offers when granting visas. The goal, limit entry of low-skilled workers. I think the more we have this conversation publicly and ask America who ought to get a green card in this country, the more momentum there's going to be the more support there's going to be. On Twitter, Senator Lindsey Graham calling the proposal devastating to his state, which relies on immigrant workers. To cut immigration by half a million people, legal immigration, uh, doesn't make much sense. The president backing that bill after signing another reluctantly, imposing sanctions on North Korea, Iran, and Russia. But almost immediately afterward, the president releasing a statement slamming the measure he just signed, saying he favors tough measures, but calling parts of the legislation significantly flawed, even unconstitutional. Leading to questions about whether Russia will actually face punishment for its election hacking. And in that statement, President Trump went on to say that he signed the bill for the sake of national unity. At the White House, Blaine Alexander, Local 4. Okay, and there you have it. For the first time ever, the Dow has closed above 22,000 points. This makes six straight days. The Dow has closed at an all-time high. The market was helped by a surge in Apple stock, which climbed 6%. The Dow is now up 3,600 points since President Trump's victory in November. And Local 4 News at 5 is just getting started today. Sure, much more ahead in this next hour, including a frantic search through the rubble after an explosion at a school. And a warning for folks heading up north crossing the Mackinac Bridge. Nick? A pharmacy break in here on Verner Highway in Detroit, not like any other though, a U-Haul smashing right through the front of this business. You'll hear from the pharmacy owner and why he says you can expect more things like this to happen. All right, Nick, but first, there is much more to the story. Brand new information to what led to a deadly shooting at an east side intersection. We'll have that in just a minute. Ben, it is. It is, Devin, and a severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued for much of Wayne County, and that does include the city of Detroit. This is in effect until 6.15. If we could go to weather, hey, guys, and we'll show you where that warning is posted right now. And that line of thunderstorms is very slow moving. There's a flood advisory in the same spot uh, over the city of Detroit. Uh, that is in effect until 745. So two big threats we're watching for 60 mile an hour winds possible with this storm and the amount of rain that is coming down from this line as well. We'll have more on that as local four news at five continues. It's new at six. Just look at this. The family SUV is torched. It's now a ball of fire. I see flames rushing out of the windshield. I'll show you how this working mom says all this is a case of mistaken identity. So maybe you think you've got some serious challenges. Well, I want you to meet a guy who's had both legs amputated. Yesterday, the victim of a hit and run driver in a crash so severe, it cracked his prosthetic, he can't even use it anymore. But today he's back at work because he says you gotta do what you gotta do. He could use just a little boost. I'll show you how you can help. All right, Steve. Brand new information tonight in a deadly shooting at a stoplight on Detroit's east side. Now, the initial word was this uh, deadly encounter was a road rage incident. But now we're learning more about what led to the shooting this morning at Connor and Shoemaker. Jason Colthorpe spoke with witnesses and police. The conflict began earlier in the morning, about 9 o'clock here at the soup kitchen. Witnesses describe it to me as the victim's vehicle. That white van was leaving when the suspect's vehicle was coming in. There was some sort of altercation and they had words. The words apparently ended with the suspect saying he would be back. He indeed caught up with the two men at the stoplight on Connor at Chandler Park. Witnesses said they heard between six and eight shots. 
told them that I passed through here this morning right around 9.15 after dropping uh, my kids off at, um, at their summer jobs. And as I get closer, I see the guy slumped over and I see maybe a couple other cars pulling over. The 65-year-old man slumped over had been shot in the neck in the passenger seat. A police scout car rushed him to the hospital where he died. I mean, it is a senseless. It's crazy. The driver of the van was cooperating with police, although he was visibly shaken. I mean, it could be any of us, right, you know, driving in our car. Maybe I, maybe I was driving too slow. Maybe I didn't make a left turn. It's sad. It's, it's, it's troublesome. It's troublesome. That people are solving their conflicts this way. This way, exactly. Now, throughout this today, we've come across a lot of surveillance video. This was from the corner store near there. The, act, the shooting happens right up in here, but you can see how it's blocked. There's a witness there looking over after hearing something. This ended up being a dead end for police. More video at the soup kitchen police looked for. That turned up to be a dead end. But witnesses there tell me the other vehicle was an older beige van with burgundy trim, and this is where things get a little murky. Police think they're also looking for a smaller red passenger car that may have been involved in this shooting at the intersection. Back to you. Well, Jason, any description available of the shooter for police? There really isn't. It's very general, but in looking over all of this today, you could see just how busy the intersection was. So this we narrowed this down to this accident it happened almost exactly at 9 26 27 28 that time frame a lot of cars going in here at the corner of uh, connor and shoemaker police asking if anyone was here remember seeing anything call them tips are coming in on the cars yeah. they could use some more help yeah david all right chase well, we are certainly hearing it uh, the thunder rumble outside our studios right i don't downtown. know when they st uh, installed a bowling alley upstairs <laughs> here it sounds like it's, it's really rocking right now awfully loud and it yeah. never fails when you want the rain it usually comes in more than you yeah. are yeah. asking for and that is the case tonight uh, let's start with a severe thunderstorm warning which is in effect for much of wayne county and this is until 6 15 tonight you can see there's about 1.5 million people uh, that were within this severe thunderstorm warning and that does include the city of Detroit. Here's the latest on four live radar. It's not a big line of thunderstorms, but it is very intense. You can see those reds, deep red colors indicating the heavy rain that's embedded within these thunderstorms. That's right now heading towards uh, the city center up towards the gross points and stretching down towards Dearborn as well. Of course, frequent lightning within these storms, but the reason that the warning is out is the wind speeds could get as high as 60 miles an hour. We're also concerned not only about the amount of rain, but the slowness of these storms, it's only moving at about 15 miles an hour. So just kind of crawling uh, through the city right now. The back edge of it, you can see right there, uh, is uh, just off to the north side of Highland Park. And this is all advancing to the east, as we said, very slowly. Here to look at rainfall totals. These are estimates over the last 24 hours, and it takes about 15 to 30 minutes for the radar to catch up uh, with the precipitation that's out there. But even those storms that did not have advisories on them uh, dropped as much as one inch plus uh, out there towards Birmingham and then also on the uh, west side of uh, Highland Park. Uh, the biggest rainfall totals are out over Lake St. Clair. Now the radar is estimating 3.3 uh, inches here. This is from two rounds of uh, rain that actually went through. Uh, so no doubt that probably played into why the flood advisory is in effect until 745 here uh, for much of Wayne County. Now here's a look at the radar beyond the uh, city of Detroit. There's not a whole lot more activity out there. We still could be seeing at least scattered thunderstorms at last to the evening hours, but once that sun goes down, we should be in the clear for tonight. We'll start tomorrow dry. We'll see more scattered thunderstorms develop in the afternoon on Thursday. The severe ingredients look just a little bit better. Uh, it's still a marginal risk for severe weather on Thursday, but it'll be around this time, afternoon and evening. And then once we get into Friday, thunderstorms coming early, late morning, early afternoon as a cold front tries to chase everything out of here. By about two in the afternoon, we should be on the dry side of things. And once that front exits, that's when temperatures drop, humidity goes down, and we set the stage for a pretty nice weekend ahead. Lows tonight, though, are going to be down into the mid 60s. And again, we should be dry most of the night after the sun goes down. It's low as 62 out there in Lenawee County, mid 60s closer to Lake Erie. West zone lows are going to be in the mid 60s, low 60s the further outside you get towards Howell 
and in our north zone, we're looking at lows generally in the low to mid 60s here as well. So, uh, forecast tomorrow keeps those thunderstorms in the afternoon as we get to a high of 82 and keep in mind the humidity still around. We will be dry again by about mid afternoon Friday that will last through most of the weekend before we pick up the rain again late Sunday. Again, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 615 for much of Wayne County tonight. We'll keep you on top of it through the show. And about uh, 12,000 customers right now without power, according to DTE. So this is really rolling. And could be more yeah. with the winds that we're expecting. Yeah. Okay, let's check in with Dr. McGeorge. About 8.5 million Americans have peripheral artery disease, but many don't know it. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, the warning signs you may be missing for this potentially life-threatening disease. But first, dozens of ambulances rush to an airport after passengers on board uh, suddenly become ill on a plane. That's next. Welcome back. An unknown odor on a JetBlue flight to Oklahoma City caused several people to get sick. The aircraft arrived this morning at the Will Rogers World Airport. Officials were called to the scene to help passengers who were having trouble breathing. At least five people needed medical attention. Authorities are investigating the cause. Detroit police are asking for your help finding two men wanted as suspects in a murder. A video from a Project Greenlight camera not far from the scene shows these two men walking on West McNichols at Warwick. That's east of Outer Drive. Look closely because it is believed that those two uh, shot, uh, approached another man two weeks ago today and shot and killed him. Now, investigators don't know the reason for the shooting, but if you recognize one or both of these men, call the Detroit police. At 5:30, telemarketers taking over your cell phone. How did they get your number? Well, now there may be a way you can take control of your phone. All is revealed. New tonight. Who'd want to live here? A developer building a subdivision accused of covering up something very creepy right smack in the middle of his construction site. A brazen and daring break in early this morning. A U-Haul right through the front of this pharmacy off of Verner Highway, smashing through it. What did they get away with, and why does the owner think that this will probably be the last time he wants to do business here? We start Local 4 News at 530 with the weather and check out the hail that just is coming down in Midtown. This is uh, from our Steve Gargiola who shot this just a short time ago. You see it's outside of the Michigan Science Center in Midtown. And in addition to the hail, the heavy rain could be causing us some significant issues as well. That same area under a severe thunderstorm warning along with about half of Wayne County right now and including about 1.5 million people within this warned area. This is until 615 wind speeds possibly up to 60 miles an hour. This thunderstorm now rolling inside of the city and just now starting to cross uh, into the river and over into Ontario. You can see Belle Isle getting some of the heaviest rain as well as downtown and midtown right now. Definitely lightning strikes out there. There as well as the heaviest rain extending just on to the east side of Dearborn. We'll look at the uh, estimated rainfall total so far and keep in mind that it is still raining in these areas and these estimates are, uh, need to sort of catch up with what's out there, but already an inch and a half uh, estimated in parts of Detroit with almost an inch uh, once you get out here towards Michigan Avenue just south of 94. We'll continue to keep you on top of this uh, throughout the shows here tonight, guys. Also here at 530, he says it's the last straw. A pharmacy owner in Detroit says he's probably closing his store for good after thieves busted into the place with a U-Haul truck. This isn't the first time it's happened either. He's been broken into two times now and doesn't see things getting any better. As Nick Monticelli shows us, this one caused a lot of damage because the thieves used a U-Haul truck to plow right through the front of the building. Good evening. The contractors that are going to have to work on this pharmacy have a lot of work ahead of them. A, just to clean up what's left here and try to patch this up. But you can see the frame of the window that was shoved in, all the busted brick and glass. But their biggest challenge is going to be up here. That steel beam right there is a part of the structure of this entire building. And because that was pushed out of the way, this section is not safe to be in. I've been in this neighborhood for uh, 25 years. And I've seen this happen over and over again. It doesn't seem like there's an end to it. The owner of this West Side Pharmacy spent hours pacing and watching, wondering what he's going to do next. Around 4 a.m., somebody took a U-Haul right through the front of the Southwest Discount Pharmacy on Verner Highway near Livernoy. The U-Haul used in this case was found about two blocks away, but the suspects were already gone. 
The pharmacy owner, who doesn't want to be on camera, says pharmacy break-ins like this are becoming more frequent as criminals look for expensive pills like painkillers. Desperation. They're desperate. Because yeah. the doctors aren't prescribing and the pharmacies are really strict in dispensing. And so the next step for them is to, uh, to go through, uh, you know, through a process like this. It's hard to know what they made off with, but the owner says it can't be much. The drugs worth taking are locked in his safe. More like uh, Norco, more like uh, Vicodin, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. This, though, is not the first time this pharmacy has been broken into. There's a bank right next door, what used to be a Bank of America. Then thieves broke in through the bank and then tried to get over here into the pharmacy. The Detroit police officers showed up as they were breaking in, though. That scared them away, but because this is the second time, the owner says this is probably the last straw. I think I'm going to sell this uh, pharmacy. I'm not going to continue with this. It's just uh, not worth the uh, risk, and it's not worth the, uh, the effort. In Detroit, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Yeah, the pharmacy owner says he has thousands of patients or customers and he's trying to transfer their prescriptions to the CVS, which is across the street. Now a local four update getting our first look at the Taylor man charged with killing a father who was trying to defend his son. 18 year old Stacy Rose is accused of stabbing Robert Briscoe to death. The father of five died just steps from his front door in Huron Township. Police say he was trying to break up a fight involving his son when it happened. Rose is charged with first degree murder and faces life in prison if convicted. Across Michigan tonight, stories from Mackinac City and some big news concerning Lake Superior this summer. Let's take you to Kalamazoo to start out. A worker has died after a tire on a large front end loader he was using to move wooden pallets apparently exploded. This was an explosion that was reported Tuesday afternoon uh, at an industrial plant in Kalamazoo's Edison neighborhood. Police say other workers found the 45 year old man with severe traumatic injuries, but attempts to save him were unsuccessful. Circumstances surrounding the worker's death still under investigation. The Mackinac Bridge Authority has issued a high wind warning tonight. The warning is for all drivers traveling across the Mackinac Bridge. You'll need to reduce your speed to a maximum of 20 miles an hour. Turn on your four way flashers and then use the outside lane. Extra caution should also be given to pickup trucks with campers, motorhomes, and vehicles pulling trailers, all of which are especially vulnerable to high winds. So that means with the high winds on the bridge, you slow down, you get to spend even longer that's on right. the bridge. <laughs> Enjoy the view. <laughs> yes, that's you right. Can. Lake Superior's water level continues to rise for the fourth year in a row and almost broke its own record set 67 years ago. Last month, Lake Superior's water level average uh, 602.85. We should note uh, this number is a height measurement, not the water depth. Uh, the last time Lake Superior's water level was this high, though, July of 1950, uh, the record was set then at 603.8. That's uh, just nearly three inches higher than where the lake currently stands, its current height. The lake has a height. Uh, one person is dead, another missing after a powerful explosion at a Minneapolis prep school. The blast caused part of the building to collapse, even though it's still summer break. Because of summer programs being offered, several teachers, staff members, and students were inside the school at the time of the explosion. And, uh, there was some debris that fell from the ceiling, so we just got out as fast as possible. We smelled gas, um, and seconds after that, my, so my daughter got up and, and was getting ready to leave out of the, the counselor's office and was blown back into the counselor's office by the explosion. Nine people were taken to the hospital. Again, crews are still searching for one person that remains unaccounted for. Investigators think the explosion was caused by a ruptured gas line that was accidentally damaged by a construction crew. The U.S. Air Force successfully launches an unarmed intercontinental ballistic missile. Minuteman 3 missile launched from California's Vandenberg Air Force Base this morning, traveled about 4,000 miles to a target area in the Pacific Ocean near the Marshall Islands. The military does regularly test missiles. It is the fourth this year, in fact, but of course it comes uh, amid rising tensions with North Korea, which is developing right now its own ICBMs. The last Alabama inmate on the run for more than two days is back behind bars, though this time in Florida. That's where Brady Kilpatrick was captured last night. The 24 year old, along with 11 other inmates, escaped from an Alabama jail Sunday by tricking a guard into opening an exit door that they had disguised 
using, as perhaps you've heard by now, peanut butter. Brady was the only inmate to make it out of the state, but now authorities in Florida say he will receive a special restriction while in their custody. He told us that he never stopped running, that he actually ran for two hours and did, never got pinned down. He was the only one who got out. He just picked the wrong county to come and hide out at. I can tell you this, he's not getting peanut butter. I assume not. Three people at the home where Brady was found are now facing charges of aiding and abetting. A developer is facing charges in Tennessee after he cleared a lot. It turned out to be a cemetery. Tombstones that were once on the lot are now gone. William Barry Brown purchased that land for development back in 2013. He said he was not on site when the lot was cleared, but he is now charged with injury to cemetery property. Brown maintains the site was surveyed prior to work taking place and that he is working to restore the cemetery. Peter Carmanos is looking to make a very big sale. It's his hockey team, Carolina Hurricanes. Carmanos has offered the franchise since 1994 and says the asking price is $500 million, at least for now. He <laughs> says a potential ownership group headed by sports attorneys and a former Texas Ranger CEO, Chuck Greenberg, is working on a deal to buy the team. So far, the group has agreed to a term sheet but do not have a purchase agreement. Now to good health. About 8.5 million Americans have what is known as peripheral artery disease, but many don't realize it. And that's in part because many times those symptoms can be mistaken for other conditions. Our Dr. Frank George is here with the warning signs you may be missing. Millions of Americans are unknowingly suffering from peripheral artery disease, better known as PAD. That includes up to 20% of people over age 60. Many people mistakenly consider leg pain a normal sign of aging, but it's also the most common sign of a circulatory problem called peripheral arterial disease. It essentially is plaque buildup in blood vessels that supply blood to the limbs. It could be the arms, the legs. Leg pain is not the only symptom to watch out for. PAD is also one of the most common causes for erectile dysfunction. 50% of men between ages 40 and 70 have ED, in some cases because the pelvic blood vessels have narrowed. One of the first signs of PAD is often cuts or sores on your feet and legs that won't heal or heal slowly. You may also notice your toenails or the hair on your legs aren't growing as fast. Another red flag is a temperature difference in your lower leg or your foot compared to the rest of your body. Early on, PAD can often be treated with a healthier lifestyle. Medication or surgery may be necessary for more advanced cases. Smoking increases your risk for developing PAD, so if you smoke, keep trying to quit. Left untreated, PAD can lead to severe leg pain or even the loss of a leg. Now, patients also have an increased risk of coronary artery disease, stroke, and heart attack. If you have any of the warning signs, see your doctor. Back to you. All right, Doc. Uh, coming up, stunning new numbers showing uh, just what the younger generation is doing when they have their heads buried in their phones or electronic devices. And here at 530, the one thing people under 25 are doing for close to 30 minutes every day. Also, a carjacking caught on camera takes a bizarre twist. What the guy couldn't uh, do that forced him to go back and get his victim to help. Your cell phone number being sold to telemarketers, robocalls constantly. Well, now there may be a way for you to take control of your phone once again. This week, new at six. Are you ready for the eclipse? A lot of people say yes, but they've been sold the wrong type of glasses for watching it. At six o'clock, what you really need to know to protect your eyes. Plus, pediatricians issuing some new guidelines when it comes to kids and juice. What's changed, especially for the youngest of the little ones. It happens to all of us, often many times a day. Robocalls and telemarketers getting your cell phone number and repeatedly calling your phone. Exasperating. Now, there are a few apps that do block certain calls, but none available right now has really been what you'd call a huge success. And unwanted calls are still getting through for people who have those apps. But as consumer investigator Hank Winchester shows us, that may change soon. We've all gotten those annoying robocalls or those messages from telemarketers. Well, now there may be a way for you to gain control of your phone. And it's actually by you using your phone. If you own a cell phone, you've probably gotten a call like this one. 
Briggs. Hi, this is Officer Robert Edwin from IRS. A new report shows that more than half of those who own cell phones, at least 55% of you, have received a scam or a robocall in the last month alone. The cell phone scam survey conducted by a group out of Arkansas. First, Orion. They're developing new technology that will give cell phone owners complete transparency by 2020. When your phone rings, you know who's calling and why. Via Skype, we spoke with First Orion CEO Jeff Stalnecker. What we don't want to do is just classify all robocalls as bad. Calls from schools, doctors, or police would still pop up via robocall. This system could get rolling on all screens by 2020. Legitimate businesses with legitimate purposes trying to reach consumers can't get them to answer the phone. And the reason for that is all I see is on my handset is 10 digits and maybe a city state. The new app will debut as Caller YD and it will be free. And there may be some more competition in this market. There are other app developers around the country working to give you ways to block those unknown numbers. Hank Winchester, help me Hank. All right, thank you, Hank. The new Caller YD app is in the testing phase. It's expected to come out by the year 2020. Until then, First Orion has apps available to block robocalls. So for more information, all you have to do is go to the Help Me Hank page and click on Detroit.com. Let's talk about so, oh, it. It's so frustrating. Yes. I know. You're Endlessly. getting irritated. Yes, I know. Yeah. Let's go to Boston where a wax statue of Tom Brady is igniting really a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Uh, some see the resemblance, uh, but other the general Internet consensus seems to be that the uh, figure really doesn't look much at all like New England's Patriots quarterback. If you're ever in the area, you want to see it for yourself. The figure is displayed at the Dreamland Wax Museum. Bernie, I'll point out that the wax figure is the one on the right. <laughs> oh, Just wow. in case. Boom. Anybody got a rim shot in here? Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.